Now, when the admission cycle is throughout the year for all the programs I'm talking about, whether it's MBA, Masters, MIMs, MEMs, any other program you talk about. So then why to apply in round one? It's a question which I hear from a lot of people and there's a lot of information also around you know, on the internet which is available. So I'm going to answer this question for you that why you should apply in round one. What are the benefits of applying early for any international program? Let's focus on Masters, MBA and some other programs. So hi everyone, my name is Rohit Cha and uh, I have a corporate experience of around 13 years and post that I've started my own firm. So it's almost close to 17 years of experience across the globe. And uh, through these videos, I try to share my opinion as well as my experiences so that you can get good insights uh, while applying to different business schools. And in case if you need any help, you can always reach out to me or you can reach out to any of our social media pages so that we'll, we will stay in touch with you. So let's talk about this specific video why to apply in round one so i'm going to tell you three key major benefits why you should apply in round one so the number one benefit of applying in round one is your chances of admit will definitely be the maximum in r1 now let's let's see the logic now mathematically if let's say any international school will have to hire uh, let's assume 50 Indian candidates. Now in R1, definitely they will hire some people, right? Maybe 20, 25. So in R2 and R3, you will be left for the remaining seats. Now in this highly competitive world and in you know the uh, amount of applications from India, you will be definitely be at a very big disadvantage in terms of numbers. Now, number two reason is schools also look for strong diversity. Now, there are people who are at disadvantage. There will be some people who will be at advantage. For example, if you're from an engineering background, IT, software, mail, if you have heard a lot about this particular combination. So these guys, and I feel really sorry for them, but they are at a disadvantage because the number of applicants are really high. Now, if you people will apply in R1, at least you will have a better chance than any other applicant in, you know, as compared to R2 and R3. So that's the reason you should apply in R1. Now that's the first benefit. Now number two, the most important thing or the component for every candidate is scholarship. Now it's purely first come first basis. But when I say first come first basis, definitely uh, merit is the important part here. But if you have a great profile, you have a great GMAT score, GRE, GMAT, whatever score you have, or you have a great bachelor's GPA, you are definitely going to get a great scholarship depending on the school where you are applying to. And in R1, definitely you can, it can move from 10, 20% to up to 100% as well. And with the same profile, sometimes I've seen in the past that with the same good quality profile, if you apply in R2 and R3, your scholarship amount might go down. That is a major difference. So to avail the maximum scholarship, if you have a great profile, go for R1. So get your profile assessed. That's the first thing I will say, because, you know, if you don't know about your profile, if you don't know your chances, it would be really hard to take a call because sometimes, you know, people, you know, people have their people have average scores and maybe decent GMAT score. Then it's it doesn't matter. They can improve the score and they can apply in R2 rather than going with an average profile in R1 just to get an admit or to get a scholarship. So that might not happen. So that's the reason. Get your profile assessed and based on that, take a call. But scholarship is an important component and I must say you will definitely get a great scholarship if you have a good profile in R1. Up to 100% definitely. I've seen in the past by many top schools as well as in the moderate range schools as well. Now the last and the important part is time. So you will have a lot of time in hand. For example, if you are applying in R1, you will get your admit by November end or December first week. Now what you will do with the time? You know, visa processing can become easy. You can learn a lot of new courses, pre-MBA courses you can do in the next six to eight months. You can save a lot of money for your future planning. Other than that, you can also apply to some of the schools in R2 if you wish to, because there are many candidates who come up with this kind of a strategy also that let's secure an admit in R1 and then maybe we can go for top notch schools. You know why? Because the application fee, you all know it's very expensive. So one school will cost you around 150 to 200 dollars. So you need to be wise in taking these decisions. So many people, they do these kind of strategies in R1 and R2. That's why if you have a secured admit in R1, you can do a lot of things with that time in the next six to eight months. So these are the three major reasons 
why i will say that if you are ready go for r1 do not wait and do not wait that okay i'll apply for one school or two school in r1 then i'll test it myself then i'll go for r2 no go with you know full swing go with your full heart apply to all the good schools where you want to apply in r1 and secure an admit that's the reason now one thing i will say is the last question many people have asked me that are you at a disadvantage maybe if let's say you don't apply in r1 i would say that you are not at any disadvantage but you will miss the advantage that's what i will say because if you talk about the schools and what i have seen this my personal opinion based on my own experience over the years schools will always look at your profile objectively so if you have very strong and competitive profile as i said you can get through in any round but the chances will go down scholarship amount may differ but schools will always look at the profiles you know objectively in each round so you are not at any disadvantage but yeah there are certain advantages which you might miss so in the end i will say that you know going with a mediocre profile or mediocre score in on in r1 just to rush is not recommended but yes going to r2 with a strong profile and an improved score may be recommended and on the other hand if you have a strong score which is ready and if you have a great profile and even with maybe not so great profile but with the great scores in combination you can still go for r1 so these are the things you know you can think about it if you are in the process of applying and still if you feel you know because the ideas or the opinions which i share it is more uh, general in nature and this may or may not apply to you so sometimes you know a personalized profile assessment can help you so you can reach out to me or maybe you can reach out to anyone whom you trust you know anyone with, with where you feel the comfort but i am always there you can put your uh, put your message or question in the comment or maybe reach out to me directly i'll put my number in the comment box so that's it thank you so much for this video and stay tuned for more and in the meantime if you have any questions any concerns just reach out to us thank you so much take care bye bye